afternoon, my brothers and sisters. Uh, Sister Ann, family, and may we find comfort in the Word of God. Psalms 90. Lord, they have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, forever thou art formed the earth and the world. Even from everlasting to everlasting, yeah. thou art God. Thou turns man to destruction and said, Return ye, children of men, yes, for a thousand years in our sight. But it's yesterday when it is past, and watch in the night. Thou carried them away with flood and they are asleep in the morning. They are like grass and groweth up. In the morning it flourish and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withered. For we are consumed by thy anger and by thy wrath we are troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For our days are past in the wrath we have spent our years as a tale has been told. The days of our years are three scores and ten, and if by reason of strength they be four scores and ten, yet is the strength of the labor and sorrow, which is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thy anger, even according to thy fear, is thy wrath. So teach us the number of our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Amen. Amen. I will now read the New Testament scripture found in 1 Corinthians 15, starting at verse 51. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? We'll now bow our heads for the prayer of comfort. Let us pray. Father God, we come into your presence this afternoon in celebration of life. As we have read the scriptures that say that one day death will die. Lord, I pray for comfort and peace for the family. God, we know that hearts are hurting but we also know, dear God, that you have won the victory. Hallelujah. That one day we won't have to worry about uh, the, the, the sorrows and the challenges of this old world. As the old song says that there is no earthly sorrow that, that heaven cannot cure. So God, I pray that you will bring uh, your Holy Spirit to comfort and, and heal those broken hearts. That you will continue to, to provide uh, peace the peace that passes all understanding as your word says. God, as we celebrate today, I pray that you will bring um, just a, a, a light moment that allows us to lift our eyes past this uh, earthly trial and look forward to the glory of your kingdom where one day we will all stand with you, hallelujah, in the, on the sea of glass and praise you for what you've done here. We thank you, we praise you, we magnify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Is it okay if I take my mask off, family? God bless you. say that about our mates, but certainly we say that about God, that even in this time, uh, God will see us through, and we thank God for that. The family has uh, invited uh, you to do uh, brief reflections if you, if there's someone that would like to Shut down for a week. 
and we was all sitting around on 4th of July Eve, and we decided to go to Merle Beach. Now, we were young, times were different then, and we jumped in, in the car and we took off to Merle Beach, not even thinking about where we were going to stay. And we slept inside on top and underneath the car. <laughs> and we had a ball. And Jackie was just that adventurous. When he started camping, I knew just how adventurous he was. So I left Gil Barco and I left all of the guys and the ladies that we worked with there. Uh, and I guess about 10, 12 years ago, Jackie called me out of the blue. I'm not sure where he got my number from. I think he might have got it from my brother, Donnie. And he said, uh, I'm coming to see you. Give me your address. And uh, he said, I just got this new GPS. I'm going to see if it works. <laughs> And he came over to visit me, and we sat and we talked and we reminisced over the years. And he was telling me some of the things that he had done. And as I was reading through the obituary, that he had purchased the truck and he was on the road, and and uh, he and Ann were doing well. And um, it's just good to know. Uh, how wonderful a person he was and how adventurous he was and in trying different things and and looking at his family. You guys look, I mean, you look just like him. You, you may not be any kin to him, but you look just, just like that. And uh, y'all just remember who he was and, and what he tried to leave to this earth. <clears throat> he left his seed, so y'all honor it. Make him proud, because one day we'll see him again. Amen. Amen. <laughs> um, I'm not one to just say a whole lot of words, but Jack and, um, and Amber were real close. Uh, just like family. Jackie was one of the guys that didn't talk to talk. He walked the wow. uh, Anytime I came over to the hen's house, I was just one of the game, you know. And uh, I just want you to know that um, y'all is in my prayers. And Jackie is is not gone. He's 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 still alive. Thank you. Uh -huh. There's an African proverb that says, as long as you call the name of someone, they live. And so we hope that you will share stories and things that, that Jackie has done and ways he's affected your life and you affected his as time goes on. Uh, I know that there are a number of folks here who were connected to him, some connected from Gilbarco, others connected from trucking, but the, those folks who were connected to him from trucking in one way or another, we just raise your hand. Yes, family wanted to know you here and bless you. Thank you for, for sharing uh, today uh, with them. Uh, when you, uh, Bishop Maynard, you, we know that when you have a connection to folks, you kind of make a family out of that. And so I'm sure there was a trucking family uh, that was there. I uh, spent some time at Gilbaco, but that's been so long ago that I ain't, I ain't got no friends that I remember left from there. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, that, that you, you remember those kinds of things. And so we, we have a preacher's connection and there's a preacher's connection that goes on. And so various connections go that we create families around. And so we, we hope that you will do that. Um, thank you for sharing today, and we hope that you will continue 
to share those um, memories as time goes on. Uh, People who know me uh, know that I'm a kind of a non-traditional uh, preacher, and sometimes I say I'm not sure why they put the obituary read silently on the program because anybody that gets obituary is already read it. <laughs> so I know y'all have read it, but take this moment. Let's take a moment to just reflect on his life and the li and the way in which he affected you and the world uh i didn't i didn't ask earlier there may be some uh some dudley people here that were graduates or schoolmates of his but uh whatever your connection we thank you i'm on behalf of the family they thank you for for all of your prayers your visits your calls and particularly your presence here today and uh, there is a facebook going on that uh, there might be those out in wherever that are uh, uh, sharing this. And so we hope that you will share that, that uh, moment. And so just take a moment as we have a little soft music to uh, reflect on, on the obituary uh, and his life with you. have another selection and uh, we will uh, proceed from there. And I know you are just 
He watches me. I sing because I'm happy. And I sing because I'm free. eyes on the sparrow and I know that he watches me thank you sister for sharing that with us you know it's interesting when it comes to eulogies a lot of folk want a person who knows them well to do a eulogy but the fact is even if they know you real well, you don't want them to tell you everything they know. <laughs> I heard a preacher say one time, I thank God for some of the things that won't be on my obituary. <laughs> what I've also found is that there are folks who even, you know, I found some folk who knew folks as being bad, and there's always some good to be found. Yeah. And then for those of us who have always been good, uh, there's a little something that we hide in sometimes. That's really why I don't I don't really do a good job at eulogies. I, in fact, uh, would rather do words of comfort and hope because we do our eulogy as we live. We live day by day. And the fact is, some folks know some things about us, but only God knows everything about us. Yeah. So therefore, uh, some of us, uh, when, when it comes to our end, uh, some folk will put you in heaven, and other folks will put you in hell. Well, That's why uh, me, I, I tell folk, I take them to the river, and whoever they belong to can come and get them. <laughs> Because folk try to decide where you going, what you've been doing, but only God is our judge. And I thank God for being the judge that, that can judge us not only justly, but with mercy. Because if he judged us justly, none of us, all of us would go to hell. But if his mercy comes then we find ourselves in him and so i thank god for it I, I i thank god for this family i met jack different folks call you by different names as you grow up i heard y'all calling ann see i know it's annie roof <laughs> yeah see i go back there for you know you know how some folks had two names and and we change our names so some of y'all knew knew jack you knew jay you know jackie all of those names are different for different people and they have a different connection to them. And that's why, you know, if you Google your name as I have, I found that there's some other Irvin Miltons in the world. Yes. But God knows me from all the rest of them. My DNA is different. When they talk about DNA now, they can do that scientifically. But even before there was a DNA, God knew me. Yes before he knew anybody else. Yeah. So there might be some other whatever your name is in the world, but God knows you from the others. Amen. And we thank God for knowing you and looking down. We, we pray for this family and hope that God might be with you in the times when, when others have gone and you find yourself lonely, that God might somehow comfort you and be with you during those days. 
let me just share a word of, of, of hope with you. Coming from Matthew, the, the 11th chapter, um, and particularly uh, verse 7, uh, this is a story, if you read uh, Matthew 11, it's a story about John the Baptist, primarily, and his connection to Jesus. If you, if you read earlier, John was very close to Jesus. John was was first of all a cousin of Jesus, born six months before him, but also John was, was uh, close to him in the ministry. And in some of our churches, folk will pray for the preacher and they'll say, bless the person who's gonna stand in the shoes of John. Because John was the last prophet. He told the folks, you vipers, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. So he, John was a prophet who spoke about life and how y'all are changing lives but John was also a priest because he pointed to Jesus and said this is the one who's coming whose shoes I'm not able to unlace who is able to to not only save you but to heal you and to comfort you and to bring you hope that nobody else can bring so this story comes near the end of John's life when when John is, is put in prison unjustly, and John uh, was, was uh, put in there and he, he, he sent for Jesus. You know, if you, you ever had a buddy, a friend who, who you thought you could call on and they would always have your back. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, that's the way John was with Jesus. John expected Jesus to get him out of jail. And yet, John, John wondered, and he, he was there, and nothing happened, and he sent some of his disciples to Jesus and said, Are you the Christ? Are you the Messiah? Are you the one that, that I've been preaching about and giving my life to and, 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 and doing all of this for? Are you the one, or shall I look for another? Are you my friend, or shall I look for another friend? Well, in this text, Jesus in verse 7 says uh, to, to the folks that John is one of the greatest people and, and John is a friend of mine, but, but sometimes we expect things out of friends that we don't get. We expect them to have our backs. We expect them to get us out of everything. But, but in this, if you read this story, on to the end of the 11th chapter, John is beheaded. And sometimes we assume that just because a friend does not get us out of the situation we're in, they're not my friend. And the reality is all of us need a friend. But sometimes that friend may not get you where you need to be. And yet John's purpose and cause and according to scripture was to be the forerunner for Jesus and his time had ended because Jesus was now in charge and, and John was moving off the scene. And sometimes as we are moving off the scene, it's not always pleasant for us. Sometimes when we look back, we say, well, I, I didn't think I would go that way. Or we say even our loved ones, I didn't think they would go that way. But, but the reality is, for those of us who are left behind, life, not, no way is a good way. And nothing happens that, that makes it not too short for us. And so as we deal with, with losing Jack, and Jackie and Jay, we, we, we find ourselves looking at a time where, when uh, we, we find ourselves looking at a time when we are, are wanting to hold on. We want to hold on to what is there. But our time is coming too. Yes. Your day is coming. And we don't know how that day has come. But I tell you what you do need. You need a friend when that day comes. Yes, sir. 
You need somebody who can be there with you, even in the nights, the days when time comes. Uh, a hymn writer put it this way, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear, what a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. And so we hold on to that friend in Jesus. I, I'm saying to you, hold on to each other as friends. Yes, sir. But know that the time will come when friends on earth will let you down. <laughs> but we have a friend who will take care of us always. Yeah, may God bless you is my prayer and may he ever keep you strong in him. Amen. Amen. We pray for this family that God might be with you in the days to come. Amen. Amen. We come now to a time of committal of the remains of our brother. I do quite a few committals. I've been pastoring the church for 25 years, 20, more than 25 years. And every time I do it, it's different. Doesn't matter what I know the person or not, every time it's different. So for this family, when we come to this moment, even if you've lost other loved ones, this time is different. Amen. And so we come to bring the remains of Jackie Andrew Bailey. But his soul goes back to God who gave it. But we come to commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust, looking for the general resurrection which is to come. For I heard a voice from heaven saying, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, for they shall rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, we shout in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
Let us receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace both now and forever. Let us all say together, amen. 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 On behalf of Community Funeral Service, we would like to thank the family for allowing us to serve you at this time. We thank you, Pastor Milton, for your service and eulogy on today. At this time, this concludes the service. For our dear brother, we'd ask that the family would stand at this time. Thank <laughs> you.